Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this wonderful celebration of the success of our graduates. We are so very, very proud of each and every one of them, the class of 2013. At this time, I wish to introduce the very Reverend Nicholas Polanowski, TOR, Provincial of the Province of the Most Sacred Heart of Jesus, and Chairman of the St. Francis Board of Trustees, who will officially begin this commencement exercise. It is truly my honor and my privilege as Chairman of the Board and as Minister Provincial to open this 162nd commencement. You can clap. I wish to emphasize the fact that the word commencement is used because what we celebrate is a beginning. We don't celebrate a farewell. And the demographics of your class is rather overpowering. We have graduates as close as Evansburg and as far as down under in Australia. So it's quite, quite a, a geographic representation here. As you begin your new life, your new careers, we know you didn't get here as a singular act and the auditory or the stands are filled with a testimony to that. And so on behalf of the board, I do wish to thank your parents, your family, your loved ones, the faculty and everyone who's brought you to this point. And I assure you that we are proud of you no matter where you go from here as our representatives. God bless. At this time, I would ask that the men please remove your caps as I ask Brother David Sheehan, TOR, campus minister, to come forward and lead us in the invocation. And I ask that you please remain as such for the singing of our national anthem by Laura Husband, Ariel Crum, Tia Dudukovic, Holin Fox, and Lauren Zikas. We pray in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, we come before you to praise you for the glory of this beautiful day in which this commencement exercise is taking place. We thank you for this wonderful sign of creation, for it shows the immensity of your love for each one of us here gathered. Lord, in a similar way, we thank you for the six Franciscan friars who ventured to Loretto 166 years ago and founded this school. We thank you for blessing their hard work, setting the foundation for what we proudly celebrate today. Father in heaven, we now ask for your blessing down upon us who are assembled for these commencement exercises, especially for our graduates and their family and friends who are gathered here around them. We ask that you bless the new life that commences in the lives of those graduating, that this day may be a witness to your love for them, a celebration of a job well done by our graduates, and a pledge of your sure guidance for, their, for them in their bright future that lies ahead. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Can you see by the dawn? 
those broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red fire the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still Thank you very much. Please be seated, everyone. Before the official welcome, I would like to inform those in attendance that we have been joined by the global community and we welcome them as this commencement, 2013, is on live internet video stream going out to the entire world. We are especially thankful to the staff of Sir Musa, the St. Francis University Center for Excellence to the rural and medically underserved areas for making this possible. Welcome to the 162nd commencement in the 166th year in the life of St. Francis University. At this time, I wish to introduce those sharing the stage with me as I ask that when your name is called, please stand to be recognized and then be seated. Father Nicholas Polonowski, Minister Provincial and Chairman of the Board of Trustees. <clears throat> Mr. Michael Walker, Honorary Degree Recipient. <clears throat> Mrs. Janice Walker, Honorary Degree Recipient. Ms. Anita Bauman, Director of Alumni Relations. Dr. Wayne Powell, Provost. Ms. Heather Meck, Associate Vice President for Human Resources and Risk Management. Dr. Captain David Sobolski, Assistant Professor of Military Science and Army ROTC. Dr. John Harris, Professor of Mathematics and 25-year honoree. <clears throat> Father Frank Scoranici, University Trustee. <clears throat> Ms. Erin McCluskey, Vice President for Enrollment Management. Dr. Stephen Baker, Faculty Senate President and Associate Professor of Psychology. <clears throat> Ms. Marie Young, Director of Marketing and Public Relations. <clears throat> Sister Claire LaBeouf, Honorary Degree Recipient and Speaker. <clears throat> Dr. Kathleen Davis, University Trustee. Mr. James Moorhard, University Trustee. <clears throat> Brother David Sheehan, Campus Minister. <clears throat> Mr. Robert Crucial, Vice President for Advancement. <clears throat> Mr. Lawrence Giannone, University Trustee. <clears throat> Ms. Sherry Crane Gordian, University Trustee. Mr. Robert Datsko, Vice President for Finance. <clears throat> Dr. Stephen Rombotz, Registrar. 
and Dr. Patricia Sorotkin, Vice President for Strategic Initiatives. We thank them all for being here today to celebrate with us. Our commencement theme for this year is harmony. For many people, the word harmony may bring to mind idyllic paradises, pastoral scenes, and images of calm and natural beauty where all is in order and all the elements work together. But in reality, harmony is the work of many elements forming a community that engages in a common outcome. Yes, St. Paul defines it as the many parts making up the body of Christ. We do not all need to be the same, but we all need to have a common vision. St. Francis University prides itself on harmony, that is, a common vision, the gospel vision as followed by the little poor man of Assisi, St. Francis, who realized early in his gospel life that community is never easy. It is not always perfect. It is a work in progress but that it finds its common chord, its harmonious chord in Christ Jesus. He also realized that differences are acceptable and valued, but that it is in the harmonizing of these differences for a common purpose and a call that is both essential and challenging. But the challenge is always worth it. It may be the challenge of bringing homeless teens together with helping and loving men and women of differing ages and backgrounds for the purpose of bestowing hope and care to these teens who have had little to believe in, very little to look forward to, and very little affection. Or it may be the challenge of supporting the economic development of a region, opening one's enterprises to diverse peoples, giving them a chance to excel in the workplace by producing a common product. But what truly makes this all come together in harmony is when all involved have a common faith vision, the vision of God's love propelling them towards success that these challenges turn into life-giving opportunities. St. Francis University believes that diversity makes harmony and on the rock foundation of its Franciscan and Catholic principles, there are great opportunities for this success. We have proof of this as evidenced in the success of the class of 2013. It is with this in mind that St. Francis University is pleased to bestow the following honorary degrees. We are delighted to present these honorary degrees to the following. Sister Claire LaBeouf and Janice and Michael Walker at this time, I ask that the honorary degree recipient stand when I announce your name and come forward to center stage for the reading of the citation and the conferral of the degree. Thank you. Sister Claire M. LeBeouf. St. Benedict was a wise visionary. He understood the heart of Christ as he placed these words into his rule. In the reception of the poor and of pilgrims, the greatest care and solicitude should be shown because it is especially in them that Christ is received. Sister Claire M. LaBeouf, a member of the religious community of the Sisters of Holy Cross, has always had a place in our heart for children who have no place to call home, those who have been disenfranchised from community Though through dissolution of family unit due to death of parent or parents, the court system, or the inability of the state to find adequate accommodations for them, she cares for the most difficult to place in a foster care or to have in an adopted family. She recognizes in each and every child the very presence of Christ and will do everything in her power to welcome this child into a place of safety, security, and love. Sister Claire is able to accomplish this in her position as founder and director of New Life Dwelling Place Incorporated. And through the experiences she garnered that led to the founding of the New Life Dwelling in her years as the coordinator of training and education for the Community Council on Child Abuse and Neglect from 1981 through 1984. 
Sister Claire founded New Life Dwelling Incorporated in 1984, a quick response to what she had come to know of the needs of this very special group of children. She realized that their desperate plight and the damage done to them through the poverty that ensues through the lack of domicile of human love and compassion. She was able to quickly find a location for her vision and then develop the coordination of volunteers who would prepare a 16,000 square foot facility situated on 70 acres of land into a viable place to give nurture and hope to these young people. She welcomed her first New Life Dwelling Place family and their adopted child in April of 1986. Her vision was realized in a miraculous period of two years. Sister Claire understands that it takes more than just a village to raise a child. It takes a community, one that is attentive to the needs of the individual child, but also one that brings an intergenerational approach to care and nurture. Her words express this clearly. Everyone should have a place they know they're wanted. Through her vision of an intergenerational community actively engaged in the common purpose of fostering acceptance and openness to these children, she not only gives hope, she builds them up with affirmation and love that is multifaceted through the community she has fashioned, a community of encouragement and commitment. Because Sister Claire M. LaBeouf has taken such good care of so many, because she has labored to give comfort and solace to the neediest children and the most neglected, St. Francis University is blessed to bestow upon her the honorary degree of Doctor of Humane Letters. Michael and Janice Walker. <laughs> Throughout Roman Catholic history, the church has celebrated remarkable couples, men and women who in and through the grace of married life have glorified Christ through their hospitality generosity, dedication to family, and to the gospel. We know well the life of Saints Joachim and Anne, the parents of Mary. Their faithful love supported her as she grew in her faith so that she could finally hear and understand the words addressed to her, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. And of course, we all know the very special place of the parents of Jesus, Mary and Joseph. Their loving presence sustained our divine Savior in his journey throughout life and to his final victory of the resurrection. Yes, we are all aware of the magnitude of the sacrament of marriage and the grace that it gives to sustain couples along the road of life. St. Teresa of Avila, the great Spanish Carmelite mystic, stated, the spiritual marriage is like the water that falls from the heavens and unites with the water of the rivers and springs in such a way that the earthly water can no longer be distinguished from the other. Or it is like a little brook that enters the ocean and there is lost. Or gain it again, it is like a strong light which divided streams into a house through two windows and there forms but one light. Michael and Janice Walker have been strong supporters of the mission of the Catholic Church throughout their marriage and have been supporters of the Catholic and Franciscan mission of St. Francis University for the last 20 years. As a 1981 graduate of St. Francis University with a Bachelor of Science degree in accounting, Michael knows well his alma mater and held the distinguished honor of being named Mr. Frankie in 1981. His partner in all things great and charitable is Janice, who is fully engaged in parish life at St. Mike at Holy Name Church in Latrobe where she chairs the Evangelization Committee, which has as its purpose Catholic education. Both Michael and Janice Walker share a heart of compassion and of service. They do this through centering on the main focus of their lives, which is their family, through which they have at its heart 
a resolute purpose that puts God first. Through their success as owner and operator of Mercury Truck Trucking Incorporated and Loya Hanna Management Services and co-owner of CME Engineering Incorporated, they have been able to care for their family, grow the economy in their region, care for their employees, and share their success with many charities that they have supported, and especially that of their church. It is because of their inspirational devotion to God, family, and community, because of their great generosity, compassion, and selflessness to so many that St. Francis University is blessed to confer upon Michael and Janice Walker the honorary degree of Doctor of Humane Letters. And again, congratulations to our honorary degree recipients. And now the introduction to our commencement speaker. Adversity can begin a journey toward life and wholeness, or it can take one to despair and brokenness. Sister Claire LaBeouf understood early in her vocation as a religious sister that her mission would be to those in adversity, especially to the most neglected and abandoned. At the most impressionable period of one's young life, so many teens are floundering in adversity that leads to despair and hopelessness because they do not have a family, a community to assist them in their struggles to overcome the adversity of loneliness, confusion, anxiety, and hopelessness. She realized this and was determined to do something about it. Her vision was not to simply give a handout to the teen on the street or a temporary shelter, or to pass the teen from foster home to foster home, from temporary fix to temporary fix, but to build a community of support and affirmation, a community of understanding and love around them, an intergenerational home that would give teens who are orphaned or abandoned a place and space to face their obstacles and challenges within a loving environment of committed adults who would support them and walk with them. I believe our patron saint, Francis of Assisi, would have been keenly attentive to the work of Sister Claire. He would have joined her in her mission to these needy teens. He would have been by her side. It is with great pleasure that I have the honor of introducing our commencement speaker for 2013, Sister Claire LaBeouf. afternoon. I bring greetings to you, Father Gabe, to the faculty and staff and trustees, parents and friends, and everyone who contributes to the spirit, the beautiful Franciscan spirit that exists on this campus. Greetings. And to you, the St. Francis University 2013 graduating class, greetings and sincere congratulations. I feel honored to be here at this commencement, as someone has already said, a new begin. And I will begin my reflections by asking you a question. Can you drink the cup? Before I proceed, I would like you to imagine a cup. Perhaps uh, it's a trophy cup. Perhaps it's a chalice or ciborium. For me, it's a big margarita glass that is served in some of the best restaurants, okay? <laughs> Whatever you choose, is it a cup? And I'm going to invite you to look deeply into that cup, because in that cup are all of the memorable moments of your life up to today. In that cup 
are the joys and the sorrows that you've already experienced, the pride and the shame, your beauty and your warts. We all have them. Times of love, times of hatred, times of healing and hurting, times of building and times of destroying. In that cup are all your addictions, compulsions, and obsessions, alongside your yearnings, accomplishments, and dreams for the future. The good, the bad, the ugly, and the not so ugly are all in that cup. And believe it or not, they all live in harmony in that cup because it's all of who you are. Imagine on each side of your cup two bottles of wine. You're going to think I'm a drinker, but I'm really not. On one side of your cup is a $300 bottle of wine from somebody's prize collection. And on the other side of the cup is your supermarket variety that on sale might go for $5.99, you know? And I'm going to ask you to pour some of each bottle into your cup. If I were to ask you to keep separate in your cup the $300 bottle or the $5.99 bottle, could you do it? You couldn't. It will blend. And so as you look into your cup at all of the memorable events of your life, some that make you smile and some that don't, you have to see it as a whole, as all of your life being in harmony. Once you've taken a good look at what is in your cup, I'm going to ask you and explore with you, I'm going to ask you to do three things. I'm going to ask you to hold your cup. I'm going to ask you to lift your cup. And finally, I'm going to ask you to drink your cup. Because it's only in drinking your cup, and to drink it regularly throughout your life, that you will experience a life of freedom, a life of dignity, and indeed, a life of harmony. And so first, we're going to hold the cup. We can't lift or drink something that we're unwilling to look at. Again, I want to take you to a restaurant where someone at your table orders a bottle of wine. I really am into this, aren't you? Wine drinking. I really don't drink. Um, take it. Somebody at your table orders a bottle of wine. And normally, in a, in a good restaurant, the waiter will bring the, a little bit of wine in a glass and present it to the person who ordered it. And what does the person who ordered it do? He holds it. He, I'm saying he, he or she holds it, smells it, swishes it around, pretends to know what he or she is doing, Anyway, looking at holding the cup. So the first thing we need to do is to look at the life that we are living. Is it in fact in harmony? Or is there a niggling feeling within that everything's not quite in harmony? And this isn't a practice that you're only going to do today. I would suggest it should at least be an annual practice or even a monthly practice. Look inside. Is everything in harmony? It takes really a lot of courage to look in your cup because in looking at your cup, you run the risk of being disappointed, being terrified, being discouraged and doubtful. It's scary to take a really good look at our lives and determine if we're really happy and in sync, if all aspects of our lives are in sync, or if not. Because if we discover that it isn't, we're going to have to do something about it. Change is scary. It also takes a lot of discipline to, to, to not live life without reflection. dum de dum You get up in the morning, you go to work, you have supper, you come home, go have supper, 
go to bed, get up the next day, do the very, very same thing, without really looking at it, without really looking at what that feeling is in your life that says, eh, either I'm delightfully happy or it's just things just aren't really the way they should be. It takes a lot of discipline not to compare your cup with somebody else's cup. I want, I'd rather have his cup. I'd rather have her cup. You know what? It wouldn't fit. It takes a lot of courage not to compare. It takes a lot of discipline. It takes a lot of discipline to look at all the moments of your life, not just the joys. It takes a lot of courage and a lot of discipline to claim who you are and what you are called to live. Some things are harder than others. We might prefer somebody else's cup, we think. Do you know what? Wouldn't be any easier to drink their cup as it will be to drink yours. And so now we've held the cup and we've looked at it, and that has taken a lot of courage. And now we're going to lift it. Some of you have already been offered an affirmation today. To your health, congratulations. A votre santé, prosit. You know, hey, graduate, here we go, okay? So now I'm going to invite you to lift the cup of your life as God's gift to you. Celebrate your life as a life of joy and of sorrows and celebrate all of your life. If you don't celebrate it all, you're going to live a truncated life and you are going to rob yourself of yourself and you're going to rob others of who you are. So it's very important to lift. Does that mean that you're going to tell your every last secret to every last person that you're going to come across? I don't think so. What it means is that you are going to live your life sincerely. We're all on this journey. You haven't done anything that anybody else in this room hasn't or had thoughts that others haven't had. You know what? We're all on this, on this journey. We're all strong. And we're also all very vulnerable. And the goal is to offer one another support. In a parish in Tampa, where I've lived for the past 35 years, there are about 20 couples who, for the, probably the past 20 years, have shared lives with one another. They either go to Saturday night mass and go out to dinner after mass, or they go to Sunday morning mass and they go out to breakfast. Don't you think that in those 20 years, among those 20 couples, there haven't been a number of joys and sorrows? There have been births, there have been deaths, there have been weddings, there have been divorces, there have been miscarriages, there have been graduations, such as today. And these people have stuck together because they have not hidden from one another the moments of their lives. They have shared it with one another and they have supported one another. Greatness is not being greater than anybody else. Greatness is being as great as you can be. And so now I'm going to invite you to drink the cup. Let's have a drink. What can I say? Let's have a drink. That has nothing to do with being thirsty. It has to do with celebration. And so today, let's have a drink. What we're drinking again, and I'll repeat this again, are the joys and sorrows of our lives. But by drinking the cup, we're doing more than acknowledging and accepting the circumstances of our lives. What we're doing is loving, cherishing, being grateful for the moments of our lives. We have a little distraction here, we're okay. 
you have to come to the point of saying, as you look in your cup, I want this life. I cherish this life. And you've always got to be willing to drink it to the dregs. You know, sometimes you have a cup of coffee. I'll switch from wine to coffee for this one. You know, there's a little grime at the end, at the bottom of the cup, particularly if you put sugar and cream in it. A little, you just don't drink that. When it comes to the cup of your life, you have to be willing to drink it to the dregs. Drink it all. There's always a temptation to want to be smarter or thinner, to wish that we would have been born in another family rather than in our own family, to wish that we were another color or sexual orientation, to be healthier, less handicapped. There's always a temptation. So it's essential not just to make the best of who you are, but to embrace who you are. And so I ask you, can you drink the cup, your cup, everything that's in your cup now? Can you change anything that's happened so far? Not a thing. You cannot take any of the joys away, Nobody can take the joys away from you, and you can't take away the sorrows. They're in there now. What you do with them, you may have a choice about. But you cannot remove them from the cup. Father Gabe made reference that I'm the founder of a program, an intergenerational community called New Life Village. And I'd like to say a few words about that and to relate my own cup to that particular program. As Father Gabe said, New Life Village is an intergenerational community. When we think of exiles, we often think of people who are coming from another country and who don't have a home. They have moved from country to country or they don't have their home, their country of origin. Well, we could say the same things about foster children. Once a child comes into the foster care system, he or she is likely to be moved frequently. And because juvenile judges don't often make expedient decisions on behalf of these children, they remain in the foster care system for a great period of time until the point where they reach an age when they are less adoptable. And so New Life Village is going to serve, will serve those children who are eight years of age and older who are in exile in the foster care system, who have been moved from one place to another frequently and without much thought. Sometimes a child comes, very often, a child comes home from school, there's a big black garbage bag at the door, is told by the foster parent, you're moving, your caseworker is going to be here in a few minutes to take you somewhere else. And so I would like to relate my own uh, story uh, in my own cup and refer it somewhat to New Life Village. I asked you to remember, or maybe I didn't ask you, I told you that your cup was filled with memorable events. Some good, not some not so good. So I'd like to share two memorable events with you right now. The first is this, I'm four years old, I'm sitting on the kitchen floor playing with my dolls and my mother is sitting beside the window and I really can't remember what she was doing, reading the paper or sewing or doing something. What I do remember is that she looked at me and I looked at her and there was a great bond of love that I felt at that moment. And pretty much like the story of the transfiguration in the Bible, I remember feeling, wouldn't it be good to build two tents here and to stay here forever? This talk about my going to kindergarten was just nonsense, and I did not want to leave this particular spot. And so that's one memorable event. And it, it, you can see that it's not in the details, but in the feeling. I felt like I belonged. I felt as though my mother and I were one. I felt as though I could stay there forever. It was a good moment. The next memorable event was not so good. 
On a Friday morning, I went into my house. It was spring vacation in New Hampshire, only to find my mom on the floor in the bathroom. She had had a cerebral hemorrhage. I was 13 years old. She lived a week. 57 years ago yesterday, she died. And so that, of course, was memorable and painful in and of itself. Equally painful was the fact that the, follow the, f the, the first year, I went to live with my godmother and godfather and my 15-year-old cousin. They were never mean to me, even if my 15-year-old cousin all of a sudden had to share her room with this 13-year-old kid. I never felt rejected, but I knew I didn't belong. If there were expenses, my father was asked to cover those expenses. I just was not part of the family. And the following year, when my father remarried, the feeling of not belonging came even stronger. I would remember walking up the street, coming home from my babysitting job, and just really not wanting to go in the house because I knew that I didn't belong there. And so what does that have anything to do with? Well, if you look deeply into your cup, you will see a memorable event that will direct your life, and you will see a memorable event that will enable you to identify with others and lead others and be of comfort to others whom you will serve throughout your life. When children come to New Life Village, children who have not belonged to anyone, children who are in exile, I feel confident that I know exactly what it feels like to belong, and I know exactly what it feels like not to belong. I won't be lying to them. They won't see me as a phony. They won't see me as someone who really doesn't understand, because I do. And so, in conclusion, I ask you, be not afraid to hold your cup, to lift your cup, to drink your cup in all aspects of your life. In your relationships, don't pick a significant other whose cup you think you can fill or whom you think can fill your cup. You can't fill somebody else's cup. When your children are born, do not attempt to give them your cup. They will be born with their own cup. Some of them will already have memorable moments of not being wanted. Others will have tremendous memorable feelings of being a very wanted pregnancy. Mama would have rubbed her belly throughout her pregnancy and, and told the child over and over again, I'm so glad, I can't wait to meet you, I'm so glad you're going to be born. Children are born with the cup. And so, provide a good foundation for your children. Do not ever allow them to go into foster care. Choose adoption over foster care. And be contributors to your society. I'm happy to tell you that a very modest graduate of St. Francis University was very instrumental in getting New Life Village off the ground. I am very grateful to that person, and I am thankful that there are people who are generous, who went to a university that promoted giving and being concerned about others in their community. And so today, St. Francis University graduates of the year 2013, I raise my cup to you. Congratulations. May you have a life of freedom, dignity, and harmony. Thank you so very much, Sister Claire, for giving us that message about cherishing the cup and to sharing the fullness of it 
honestly and truthfully with those around us. At this time, the St. Francis University singers, accompanied by Father John Mark Klaus, will present our interlude entitled Anthem to St. Francis University. Thank you very much for that beautiful presentation. We will, now, we will now have the presentation of degree candidates. I ask that you please hold your applause until all candidates for each degree have received their diplomas. Will the candidates who have completed the requirements for the bachelor's degree in health science and the bachelor's degree in science please rise. Father President, I present for the degree of Bachelor of Health Science and Bachelor of Science those who have been approved by the faculty of the university. By virtue of the authority committed to me by the mandate of the trustees, I confer upon you the credential for which you have been recommended, admitting you to all the rights and privileges which throughout the world pertain to this credential. In testimony whereof, you will receive the certificate of the university officially signed and sealed with the seal of the university. Bachelor of Science candidates, you may be seated. You will stand and process to the stage by row. The degree of Bachelor of Health Science is conferred upon 
Lori Johnston. The degree of Bachelor of Science is conferred upon Brittany Aaron. Michelle Acosta. Jenna Bailey, summa cum laude, honors program graduate, departmental honors in chemistry. Trent Baker, cum laude. Nicholas Bancroft, cum laude. Gregory Banky. Amy Barr. Andrew Boffman. Kayla Bahori. Shannon Bish, magna cum laude, honors program graduate, departmental honors in psychology. Joseph Bellissimo, summa cum laude. Anthony Belmore. Tricia Bemis. Leah Bennett. Magna Cum Laude, Departmental Honors in Physician Assistant Science. Ethan Berkebile, Cum Laude. Lauren Besman, Magna Cum Laude. Alicia Black, cum laude. Lindsay Bachman, cum laude. Rachel Bachman, magna cum laude. Caitlin Borischok, cum laude. Jessica Bosick, cum laude. Irene Boyle, magna cum laude, honors program graduate. Carly Braun, cum laude. Jennifer Brennan. Olivia Bucci, summa cum laude. Jennifer Burkhart, magna cum laude. Madeline Campbell. Liza Catania. Chelsea Charles, cum laude. Catherine Chelko.
Janae Simba, magna cum laude. Rebecca Cloninger, summa cum laude. Derek Comparator, magna cum laude. Brooke Contecos. Danielle Conwell. Allison Cotchen, magna cum laude. Francesca Crawford, magna cum laude. Rebecca Cresswell. Julia Crow, cum laude, honors program graduate. Ariel Crum. Jennifer Sictor, cum laude. Christina Doherty, cum laude. Adam Davidson, Honors in Continuing Education. Tyler Davidson. Danielle D. Domenico. Rachel D. Felice, cum laude. Danielle Desort. Samantha D. Castle Novo. <laughs> Melissa Dietrich. Clay Dotson, summa cum laude. Richard Doring, cum laude, and honors program graduate. Rachel Donovan. Kamel Dreher. Tia Dudakovich, magna cum laude, honors program graduate, departmental honors in physician assistant science. Ryan Duffy. Sarah Dumb, magna cum laude. Gabrielle Dunchuk. Tara Edmiston. Anthony Irvin. Rebecca Ferrity, cum laude. Amanda Farrell. Jesse Feltz, summa cum laude. Joshua Field. T. 
Tessa Filiano. Shanae Fleming, Honors Program Graduate, Departmental Honors in Accounting. Ashley Flock, Cum Laude. Jennifer Flynn. Sean Foley, Magna Cum Laude. Jeremy Foran. Alicia Ford. Colin Fox, cum laude. Danielle Fritzen, cum laude. Colin Fry, magna cum laude. Andrew Gauss. Dustin Garman, cum laude. Rachel Geisler, summa cum laude. Jordana Garrity, magna cum laude. Nikia Gibbs. Dominic Galati. Brandon Godfrey. Alexana Godleski. Taylor Golden, cum laude. Patrick Green. Katie Grove. Michaela Hairston. Andrea Hall. Bruce Hamilton. Tyler Haney, cum laude. Kyle Harbridge, cum laude. Joel Harrison. Taylor Harvey, cum laude. Teo Dureco Heckman, cum laude.
Derek Hessler. Hillary Heiss. Alexandra Himes, summa cum laude. Megan Hine, cum laude. Daniel Hines, magna cum laude. Lindsay Hinkle, magna cum laude. Samantha Hirsch, cum laude. Mallory Hoke. Taylor Holby, cum laude. Chaquez Hopkins. Allison Porta. Miranda Hubler. Olivia Hunter. Laura Husband, cum laude. Eric Hutton. Evan Hutton, cum laude. Jacob Ayula. Janelle Jesberger, magna cum laude. Alexa Janelle, magna cum laude. Matthew Johnson, magna cum laude. Thomas Johnson, summa cum laude. Matthew Djurjevic, Honors Program graduate. Sean Kane, magna cum laude. John Carradine, Jr. Sean Kirby, magna cum laude. Lauren Klein. Leah Kletzley, magna cum laude. Elizabeth Klein, magna cum laude. Jennifer Klein, magna cum laude. Ryan Nee, magna cum laude. Mary Kohler, magna cum laude. Hannah Koval, cum laude.
Charles Cosdren. Christine Crayshaw. Andrew Kraut, cum laude. Ryan Leduc, cum laude. Zekia LaRue. Robert Laskowski, Jr. Adam Lechak, magna cum laude. Mary Claire Liberator. Carly Link, magna cum laude. Malia Lonergren, summa cum laude, honors program graduate, departmental honors in physician assistant sciences. Diane Luther. Jordan Luther, magna cum laude. Gregory Madison. Madison Mador, cum laude, honors program graduate. Thomas Maffey Stump, summa cum laude. Gina Maggio, cum laude, honors program graduate. Kelly Maher, magna cum laude. Andrew Martin. Robert Maruka. Kelly Mason, cum laude. Brittany McClellan, cum laude. Brittany McDermott, magna cum laude. Maureen McDonough, cum laude. Caitlin McGowan. Thomas McWilliams, summa cum laude. Janelle Miller. Nicole Miller, summa cum laude. Tia Mitchell. Elizabeth Malaker.
Lisa Mock, cum laude. Christina Moore. Mary Ellen Morningstar, magna cum laude. Timothy Myers. Amanda Naglik. Amber Nagy. Joseph Nagy. Ashley Neptune. Jennifer Nicholson. Kelly O'Donovan. Elliot Orlowski. Patrick Oraho. Michael Pacifico. Chelsea Palmer. Kevin Parker, Jr. Patrick Paul. John Pavlichko. Cum laude. <laughs> Stephanie Pence. <laughs> Trina Perone, summa cum laude. Robert Peters. Kimberly Peterson. Andrea Petrunik. Gabriel Phillips. Kristen Powell, magna cum laude. Holly Preslovich, summa cum laude. Grant Price. James Price, cum laude. Catherine Prosser. Rachel Prosser.
Jennifer Ravati. Holly Repco, magna cum laude. Melanie Riglin, cum laude. Laura Ritchie, summa cum laude, honors program graduate. Jennifer Rivers, magna cum laude. Catherine Robinholt, cum laude. Christina Rombouts, magna cum laude. Andres Rosa. Megan Ross. Caitlin Rossman, magna cum laude. Charles Rusnick. Walter Savage. Emily Saylor, cum laude. Marie Schonenberger, Departmental Honors in Environmental Engineering. Benjamin Schultz, cum laude. James Seyfried. Alyssa Seiler. Brittany Shaw, magna cum laude. Umar Shannon. Alexander Shar. Mary Sherman, magna cum laude. James Shearing III, cum laude. Caitlin Simmons. Jeremy Smick. Andrew Smith. Ashley Smith. Jacob C. Smith, cum laude. Jacob M. Smith, cum laude.
Robert Smith. Ashley Spack. Jason Springer, summa cum laude. Eric Stasek. Laura Stayrook. Cum laude. Mark Steinmiller, Departmental Honors in Biology. Jessica Stojak. Chelsea Stoner, Magna Cum laude. Olivia Stover. Braden Stoy, Magna Cum Laude. Mitchell Straub. Megan Serena, summa cum laude. Brian Sweeney, cum laude. Joshua Thiel. Derek Thomas. Wayne Tiller, Jr. Nathan Turco, Magna Cum Laude. Holly Ergolites, Cum Laude. Caitlin Vitale. Keon Wade. Chelsea Wagner. Crystal Waite, magna cum laude. Joshua Walters. Matthew Warfel, cum laude. Jeffrey Wasileski, summa cum laude. Dana Waters. Rhonda Watts. Rebecca Webster, cum laude. Mara Weinsroll, summa cum laude. Alan Wirtz. Donald Wirtz. Nicole Wetzel.
Elizabeth Wheeler, summa cum laude, honors program graduate. Elizabeth Williams. Hope Williams, cum laude. Ian Wilson. Sherry Weingartner. Lauren Wingard, cum laude, honors program graduate, departmental honors in physical therapy. Brandon Winters. Salama Witt Woldemeskel, magna cum laude. John Wolf, cum laude. Kevin Wood. Benjamin Wollaston, cum laude. Lakin Wright. Taylor War, cum laude. Lauren Zikas, magna cum laude. Paulina Yakshu Chenko. Jennifer Yili, summa cum laude. Stephanie Yan, cum laude. Amanda Zumensky, cum laude. Richard Zelnowski, magna cum laude, honors program graduate. Will all of the Bachelor of Health Science and Bachelor of Science graduates please rise once again. may be seated. Will the candidates who have completed the requirements for the bachelor's degree in arts please rise.
Father President, I present for the degree of Bachelor of Arts those who have been approved by the faculty of the university. By virtue of the authority committed to me by the mandate of the trustees, I confer upon you the credential for which you have been recommended, admitting you to all the rights and privileges which throughout the world pertain to this credential. In testimony whereof, you will receive the certificate of the university officially signed and sealed with the seal of the university. degree of Bachelor of Arts is conferred upon Elizabeth Anastasio, cum laude. Joseph Anastasio. Liam Anderson. Kina Onyam <laughs> Kayla Bahori Renee Cardella Angela Carmosino Julie Cash Dollar, Magna Cum Laude Honors Program graduate Emily Christensen Molly Comparator, cum laude. Nicole Del Vaglio. Kelly Dugan. Aaron Fallon, cum laude. Joshua Field. Shanae Fleming, Honors Program graduate. Thomas Foley Brianna Garcia Lisette George Nikia Gibbs, Departmental Honors in Sociology. Elise Grasser, Magna Cum Laude, Honors Program Graduate, Departmental Honors in History.
Drew Greenwald, magna cum laude, honors program graduate, departmental honors in political science. Brielle Halls. Kelly Hyden. Eric Harrell, summa cum laude, honors program graduate, departmental honors in English. William Houston. Robert Imbrogno, Jr. Matthew Djurjevic, Honors Program Graduate. Kirsten Kaiser, Magna Cum Laude. Michael Coben. Terry Kuhn, Magna Cum Laude. Caitlin Labella. Tara Lombardo, cum laude. Malia Lonergan, summa cum laude, honors program graduate. Amanda Lasowicz, honors program graduate. Jordan Luther, magna cum laude. <laughs> Kathleen Lyon. Thomas Maffey Stump, summa cum laude. Gina Maggio, cum laude, honors program graduate. Lauren Malin. And Jeska Marciniak, cum laude. Derek Markle, magna cum laude. Shane Martin, cum laude. Cheyenne McGovern, summa cum laude. Tia Mitchell. Alexander Munsert, summa cum laude, departmental honors in English. Alexander Redding. Kirsten Rays. Tricia Sadler.
Rakiki Solomon. Heather Stiglich. Sabina Stratif. Jerika Thomas. Caitlin Truax. Rachel Vasilko, magna cum laude. Michael Vaughn, Jr. Mara Weinzerl, summa cum laude. Yvette Ibai. Bachelor of Arts graduates, please rise and accept our congratulations. And again, a special congratulations to each and every one of our graduates, to the class of 2013. Let's give them a round of applause one more time. At this time, I ask Mr. Derek Markle, senior class president, to come to the stage to lead the graduates in a ceremony that marks their transition from undergraduate to graduate. Let us welcome Mr. Markle to the podium. Good afternoon, everyone. Before I begin, I'd like to recognize briefly a very special individual here with us today who has been a leader, a mentor, a role model, and most importantly, a dear friend. This commencement ceremony marks the ninth and final one for University President Father Gabriel Zeiss, who will continue his journey going to another endeavor after St. Francis. On behalf of the class of 2013, I'd like to thank Father Gabe for all he's done, not just for our class, but for the university as a whole. And we wish him all the very best. Thank you, Father Gabe. When asked to lead the turning of the tassel ceremony, a million thoughts flooded my mind when I began to think about what I can say. But one theme in particular stuck out as quintessential to St. Francis University. Imagine with me for a minute a cold winter's night in Loretto. <laughs> the snow is snowing, the wind is blowing, and a friend of mine says to me, Derek, this weather makes this place absolutely horrible. But you know what? We're here with the best people in the world. That's what's... <laughs> that is what's truly unique about St. Francis, the people. 
from the faculty and staff that treat us as if we're their own sons and daughters, to the friends we've made that have become like brothers and sisters, creating one big family that is the class of 2013. The people here at St. Francis University truly make this place special, and one that we will never forget. For you never truly leave a place that you love. A part of it goes home with you, while a piece of you is forever left behind. And so, my friends, it is time for us to pen the final words of this chapter of our lives and begin anew as we turn our tassels from our right whoops, to our left. It is my sincere hope that although this chapter may be over, the characters will remain the same throughout the Book of Life. I wish you all God's peace and abundant blessings for a future filled with health, wealth, and happiness. Congratulations, class of 2013. Thank you very much, Derek, for that remarkable tassel ceremony. We are honored to have Captain David N. Sobolski, United States Army, with us today. He will be leading us in the commissioning of one of our graduates, Yvette Ibai, who has participated in ROTC during her time at St. Francis University. We are proud of the success of Yvette and thank her for her service to her country. We commit ourselves as a university to pray for her in her continued journey of service. Cadet Yvette Ibai, please come forward. At this time, raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your full name. Having been appointed an officer in the Army of the United States, in the grade of second lieutenant, do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies foreign and domestic, that I bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office upon which I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant Ebai. Once again, congratulations, class of 2013. You have earned the right to take your proper place within the esteemed ranks of St. Francis University's honored alumni. To officially welcome you to this lifelong membership within the university community, I call upon Ms. Anita Bauman, Director of Alumni Relations at St. Francis University, who will welcome you to the ranks of St. Francis University alumni and speak on behalf of the St. Francis University National Alumni Association, Ms. Bauman. Good afternoon. It is my honor and pleasure to be the first to greet you officially as alumni of St. Francis University. On behalf of the St. Francis University Alumni Association and the Office of Alumni Relations, I congratulate you on your achievement and welcome you to the community of alumni that is now more than 16,000 strong. 
Hopefully you have already begun to experience the sense of pride that comes from being part of St. Francis University. My wish for you is that this feeling of pride will only increase and that it will strengthen your connection to the St. Francis community. Each of your experiences at St. Francis has been different depending on your major and interests, extracurricular, athletic, or service pursuits, faculty who've taught you, study abroad or spring break trips you've taken, work study jobs you've had, and the academic work you've undertaken. But there is one overarching universal truth that applies to each of you during your time here. You have been known here. You have not been just a number, a face amidst a sea of faces in an overcrowded lecture hall. Rather, you have been known in a personal and life-changing way. You have been known as students, as athletes and artists, as volunteers, as organizers, as leaders and workers, as researchers and scholars, as sorority sisters and fraternity brothers, as scientists, educators, writers, historians, and healthcare providers. And I can tell you this, as alumni, you will continue to be known. Known collectively as St. Francis alumni and known individually for the unique person you are. You will always be a part of this community, a known and valued part. And I hope you never forget that because we certainly won't. The university will hold you in high esteem for the rest of your lives and indeed you will always be in our hearts and prayers. We care about what happens to you as you venture out from these halls of learning. We want to hear about your milestones and accomplishments, your career changes and personal highlights. We hope to see you at alumni events in the cities where you live and here on campus for alumni weekend and fall homecoming. There will be many opportunities to stay in touch and stay connected. If there's any way that the Office of Alumni Relations can assist you, please don't hesitate to contact us. We are here to serve you and we look forward to doing that for years to come. So once again, congratulations on this important achievement and welcome to the St. Francis University alumni community. Thank you so very much, Anita. And at this time, I invite to the podium Father Nicholas Polanowski, who would like to share a few words. As a form of synergy, to follow up on what Derek said, the Board of Trustees and my province <coughs> ask me to highlight as you become as you have become alumni, to highlight an alumnus. We talk about family, as Derek did, and a family spirit. I remind you that the university is sponsored by the Franciscans. And speaking as a Franciscan, and one who presently has a ministry to kind of be the chairman, using our language, of the Franciscans. St. Francis began in obedience to the church. Six Irish men from the Diocese of Tuam came at the request of a bishop in Pittsburgh who wanted to bring the gospel and education into the eastern part of his diocese, this is Loretto. And so they did it. Six men in obedience to the church. And to use it as a type of analogy, they began a family business, using Derek's word. And you know when you have a family business, it becomes the vehicle of how you recruit new men but more importantly, how you proclaim the gospel. The alumnus that we wish to recognize is your own president, Father Gabriel, class of 75, who sat where you sit right now, many years ago. And prior to that, 
he had gone to a high school in the Archdiocese of Philadelphia, the brotherly love and sisterly affection, and that school was sponsored by the TOR Franciscans from Loretto. So his education and his exposure to the community began there, and then he joined the family and sat where you sit. Since it's a family business, following on an analogy, you never leave it as long as you're part of the family. So it should be no surprise to you that Gabe, Father Gabriel was here before being president, and that he worked on the campus, and even had an idea of social outreach, and started with a very small core group that now has become the Dorothy Day Center, and a vital part of how we outreach to the campus. And then, like any other family, he went on to another job in the um, Diocese of Trenton, and now he's re returned. The family asked him to come back, of which he did, and diligently served, and so we would like to recognize that. But again, it's not really proper to say farewell. You know, uh, in German you would have a Wiederschauen, in, 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 um, you would have, you know, au revoir, because it's not a farewell. He's, he's always part of the family. And you now are part of our family. And so I would just like to end this with a recognition of Father Gabriel, as Derek preempted me and tried to upstage me. But, um, and just a, a hand of approval and applause to him. Thank you, thank you, Father Nicholas, and thank you, everyone, uh, for that moment of thanks. I truly appreciate it, but it's back at you. My heart is with you and will be with you always, no matter where I go, as Father Nicholas said so well. You, the alumni now, the class of 2013, are a part of my everlasting family, and I am truly proud to call you brothers and sisters in that membership. It is obvious to all of us that events such as this commencement just don't happen. They happen because there are many people behind the scenes, people who care deeply for you, graduates, class of 2013, and all at St. Francis University, and their hard work shows their dedication to you and to all of us. A special word of thanks must be offered to the following who contributed much to make this very day special. Ms. Donna Menes, Ms. Vicki Soika, Dr. Stephen Rombots. Mr. Pat Fieldstucker and his fantastic team who set up and do all of the arrangements for the various events of this weekend. To all those students who came here to help us and took time away from their summer break to help us as ushers and in various other capacities, we certainly thank them. We thank our buildings and grounds team and our police. And of course, we are very thankful to our Torvian folks who help us in so many ways to make sure that we have the best food imaginable during this weekend. I want to thank in a very special way too the wonderful faculty and staff of this great university who have made of course your success, the class of 23, so apparent to us all. I want to thank Father Nicholas Polonowski and all of the Franciscans for their tremendous service. And I also wish to thank our commencement speaker, Sister Claire LaBeouf, for her wonderful words and also to Janice and Michael Walker, our other honorary re recipients, for allowing us to honor them and having them here with us today. I want to thank again, finally, the families and friends of all of our alumni. It is because of your sacrifices, your love, and your dedication that these men and women have made it to the place they are today. We thank you for all of your support. And finally, to our graduates, Thank each and every one of you for being an important part of the St. Francis University and now its family forever. You have made this university better for having been here and your mark upon it is truly everlasting. 
By your response to the Franciscan values and mission of your university, the world will certainly be a better place for what you will bring into it. Again, thank you, class of 2013, as we honor you this day. At this time, I ask that all please stand. And I ask that men please remove your caps as we sing the alma mater as it is led by the St. Francis University singers and Malaya Lonergan. And I ask that you remain as such for the benediction offered by Brother David Sheehan, TOR, campus minister. pray in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Great and glorious Father, we thank you and we praise you for everything these commencement exercises stood for. We thank you for all of your providential guidance that helped our graduates through their studies and through their various activities while here at St. Francis University. God in heaven, Bless these graduates as they go from this place. Just as you have guided them through their studies, we ask that you now walk with them into the next part of their journey. Aid these graduates in taking all that they have learned, all they have studied, and use those gifts of knowledge to promote harmony within themselves and in all those they encounter. In a special way, Lord, bless these graduates with an increase in faith. First, in an increase in faith in you, so that they may know you in a more powerful way, that you are ever close to them, and ever watching over them as they begin this new chapter in their lives. Give them also an increase in faith to live out the Franciscan goals of higher education in the world that is in, that is in so much need of that witness. Finally, Lord, grant them an increase in faith in themselves so that they may be strengthened to courageously go out into the world to enact influential changes that benefit humanity and all of creation, because we know, Lord, that you have empowered them to do such. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of our graduates. We honor you as we honor them. We ask that you, that you love our graduates as you, as you have first loved your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. We ask all these things in the unity of the Holy Spirit and through the intercession of our Father Francis. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.